Hey everyone, welcome back to the shack. So, I know the name is Mike's Mac Shack. And I know I've been doing a lot of PCs lately, but geez, I've just been getting such cool freaking PCs to deal with. This is an interesting one. Now, if anybody watched my live stream with Steve at Mac84 that we broadcast at the beginning of October, you saw this machine. If you didn't watch that live stream, I suggest going back and watching it because it is hilarious, especially in some spots. This is a Toshiba Libretto 50CT. This is one of the original, what we call ultra mobile PCs. And just just for context, because it looks larger than life in the, in a video, I'm going to put something up against it that most people should be familiar with. This is an iPhone 6S Plus. This is my personal phone that I use every day. And yes, you can laugh at me because I use a four-year-old iPhone. That's how big this sucker is in terms of width. So, just a little comparison there. So, the computer itself is, like, amazingly tiny for the day. Uh, the computer came out in 19... I want to say 1994, 95. Um, it's a Pentium 75. Um, it normally has 60 megabytes of memory. And a uh, this particular model, being the uh, 50CT slash 810 as you see there. This one would have come with an 810 megabyte hard drive. Now, this one's been upgraded to a 2.2 gigabyte. So, it has decidedly more storage than your normal libretto. Um, I mean, it is absolutely tiny. So, <clears throat> I'm trying to film this on my desk, just <laughs> for you know, general reference, you know, there's a magic mouse. You know, the magic mouse is, is almost as tall as, as the computer is. It's just ridiculous. Um, so, what was the point of this machine? Well, you know, I don't think it really had a point. I think it was more of a, oh, well, we can do it, so let's just do it. Um, attempt by Toshiba. So, the computer, now, I have the, I have the port replicator on the back, so this makes it slightly bigger. The computer is 8.3 inches wide by 4.53 inches tall and 1.43 inches thick. Okay, now that doesn't include the port replicator on the back. With the battery, now this has the standard battery, which is, of course, dead. Now, I mean, this, this, this battery is absolutely tiny. I mean, <laughs> that's, you know, it goes the whole length of the computer, but I mean, it's positively ridiculously tiny. With the battery installed, the computer weighs 1.87 pounds. So it weighs less than two pounds. It has a Pentium processor. This one has 32 gigabytes of memory and a 2.2 gigabyte hard drive. And on top of all that, it's got a bloody cutter screen on it. 6.1 inch full color Super VGA display capable of displaying um, 1024 by 768 at least externally. I believe internally it can only display 800 by 600. And truthfully, you wouldn't want to display anything bigger than that anyway. Full 16-bit color, so we're talking millions of colors. It has a full, not full size, but full laptop keyboard for the time. This is not, you know, compared to what a laptop nowadays has. So, you have your standard keys, your controls, your alts, you have your inverted T arrow here, 
And way, way up at the top, you got these itty bitty little mic little micro keys for the Windows. So this computer was designed to run Windows 95. So uh, Toshiba actually made quite a few of these machines. Uh, they actually made a lot more of these than I ever thought they did. Um, I thought they only made like four or five models here. They were making these all the way up until the early 2000s. Um, in various specifications, they had little tablet-like machines with pens and everything else. This is the one I'm familiar with. And this is the one that always gives me gets me all giddy and excited. So, uh, a friend of mine used to have one of these. We used to use it to program the, the ECM in his car. He had a little race car. So, this one works perfect. There's nothing wrong with it. The battery's dead. But, I mean, that's kind of to be expected on a 20-plus-year-old computer. 25-year-old computer, at least. Um, and this thing's in amazing shape. Usually, these things are beat to crap. Because they're so tiny. Uh, they get dropped a lot. And beat up a lot. And uh, this one here seems to be seems to have been used by a, uh, for a GPS in a vehicle of some sort. Maybe a truck or something. So that was actually kind of amazing. That's why they probably why they have the bigger hard drive and the extra memory in it for the uh, software. So there's no floppy drive. There's no CD-ROM drive. There's uh, a printer, printer port, parallel port, a uh, serial port, and a VGA port on the back. There's no PS2 mouse. There's no PS2 keyboard. Um, nothing. There's one 16-bit PC card slot on the side. Uh, PC MCIA as we used to call it back then um, which means that you can insert cards like these now this one won't work this is a 32-bit card this is actually a uh, dual USB firewire card I use this on my Panasonic laptop which actually I think I might feature that too because it's that's a rather interesting machine in itself um, but you can install these little expansion cards that go on the side here so you can expand the capabilities of the computer. And uh, there's all kinds of stuff you can actually get for, you can get network cards, modems, SCSI cards. Um, there's a floppy drive that actually plugs into here that's bootable for this machine, it actually goes to this machine. Um, so we're gonna power it on. I'm just gonna show you how it runs. It actually runs really, really well for a uh, low, lower end Pentium. So like I said, this is a Pentium 75. Oh, and this has audio too. I forgot about that. This thing has a, this is a speaker right here. This actually has sound and everything. So this is a fully kitted laptop. It's just tiny. And it's actually kind of amazing that they can make one this tiny and still have this kind of power in it. So, now I am using my Canon camera, so sometimes it doesn't focus properly when uh, things move across the screen. And this screen is a little on the dim side. Um... And actually, that is kind of indicative of a lot of the librettos. They do kind of have slightly washed out, dim screens. It actually looks better in the camera than it does in person. <laughs> um, looking at the screen on my camera, it actually looks a lot better on the camera than it does in person. So. But we're going to boot her up here. And, uh. Now I never said the sound was good. I just said it had sound. This is not a this is not a laptop you're going to be wanting to watching a full length movie or anything on, even if you could. So, but this here, this is your mouse. This this is almost identical to the IBM TrackPoint. If anyone's familiar with those, you just simply move it in the direction you want to move, and it's actually velocity sensitive. So the harder you push it or pull it, the faster the mouse will go. Ooh. Ooh, just like so and then on the back of the screen is actually where your mouse buttons are so like that's the right click whoops and there's a little nub on the left click so you can feel it so we're going to go to the start menu and uh, I have not done anything to this computer I haven't reloaded windows or anything like that um, let's zoom in a little bit here so you can get a slightly better look here. Um, this thing has a really crisp screen on it for its age. And it is an active matrix, so there's no ghosting or anything like that. So, 
Uh, this travel route co-pilot software, I think, is for the GPS. We didn't get the GPS module. So, and this computer's on loan, by the way. So, but like, it's got a Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, uh, Microsoft Net Meeting, which was a primitive version of Skype back in the day. <laughs> um, you know, of course, you can go to MS DOS. Um, there's the original utilities from Toshiba. Um, where you can change all kinds of the settings and go into the bio settings through Windows. Um, there's this backpack folder here. Um, my, my guess is that you probably had a backpack parallel CD-ROM on this at one point in time. And they almost would have had to to get the GPS software on because the GPS software is something like 1.4 gigs on the hard drive. So, and you have the standard accessories, your multimedia, your internet tools... Um, they have a pretty slim down copy of Windows on this machine. So, um, it doesn't even have all the stuff. Um, like it doesn't have, uh, Windows Media Player or anything of the sort on it. Um, it doesn't have any of the demo media files or, uh, the like on it, so. But if we go into over here to my computer and we do a right click we go to properties and uh, as you see this computer is actually quite sprightly for you know it's eight and 32 gigs of memory was actually a good bit of ch a good chunk of memory for windows 95 i mean i've ran it on computers with as little as eight um 16 was pretty typical so now you see it just says it's a penny with 32 megs here it's doesn't get into it's not like a newer version of windows where it'll tell you Oh, Intel Core 2 Duo stepping four subprocessor model 6x80 and and you know <laughs> it just says no you got a Pentium dude <laughs> so um but for disk drives you can see it's just a generic IDE controller it is an IDE hard drive so it can be upgraded and replaced if it needs to be um display adapters it has a CNT um graphics card uh, I believe it's got um two megabytes of memory um which was actually um not too bad at the time uh let me check here i have this spec sheet here up on the screen okay it has one megabyte which actually still isn't bad for a windows 95 machine um 512k was pretty common uh, a lot of computers still only had standard vga which was 256k so um it's got a one megabyte of memory it's a cnt uh, 65550, which is actually a pretty good chip, and it has 16.7 million colors. And um, okay, internally it can do um, 640 by 480 on this display. Um, you can up the resolution to 1280 by 1024, but then you get the scrolling display. Uh, if you've never seen that, it's very annoying. Um, now, externally, it can run. Uh, 1280 by 1024, um, but only at 16 colors. So, um, but you can run 1024 by 768 with 256 colors. Not bad, not great, but not bad. So, it's a solid um, Super VGA controller. Um, so, I don't think it's, yeah, just standard PS2 port mouse, PCMCI socket. Um, this is where I figured that they had the backpack heart, uh, um, CD-ROM drive, because it's got the SCSI controller driver in here for a Microsolutions backpack. Um, I, I, I want to try to hook my backpack drive up to this and see how it works, my hard drive. Um, for sound, it's got a Yamaha OPL3 SAX sound system, which is actually pretty good. Um, Sound Blaster compatible. Not perfectly, but it's pretty good. And then you're just your typical system junk here. So, I mean, this is only Windows 95. Um, this computer could run Windows 98. Um, this is not, this computer's not mine, so I don't really want to change a lot. And I don't have a CD-ROM drive for it at the moment. So, uh, you know, getting Windows 98 on is going to be difficult. Because Windows 98 is something like 54 floppy disk, I believe. Um, something I'm not exactly prepared to image at this time. Um, 
But, uh, this, you know, I mean, this is, it's not really, you know, it's not really a great fancy machine, but it's very capable for a Pentium 75. Here's a little flash video. I think this is a Shockwave flash video. Click the red dot. This is uh, this goes with the uh, GPS software, I'm pretty sure. There's no sound, it's just video. Oh, it's uh, showing off their new software. Oh. Cocktail planner for the next millennium, which this is actually copyright 1999. So uh, this computer was probably in in use at least then. So I didn't really go through the hard drive yet to really see exactly what files were all on it. Um, but this is just a little quick intro to the uh, Toshiba Libretto. Um, I do want to make more videos on this. I, I definitely want to do stuff with this machine. Um, like I said, this machine is not mine. This actually belongs to Steve of Mac 84. He picked this up at a uh, estate sale, um, or a yard sale or something cheap, I think he said. Um, but if you, if you just look down here, so the capacity is 1.97 gigs on the hard drive. And we still have 670 megs free, so I think I can play Doom on it. So, let me know what you want me to play or what you want me to do with this, this little sucker. And uh, we'll see if we can't make it happen. You know? And uh, we're going to shut down the computer. And like most computers of the era, um, I don't believe this one shuts itself. Uh, this one actually, I think, might shut itself down. Yep, it does. So this is a full ACPI computer, so it'll just turn itself on and off. So... But there's the uh, there's a libretto. Let's close it up here. Here's your mouse button. This is your primary button. This is your secondary. This is your right click and your left click. So actually, it would go like this. <laughs> so and we see here on the back we've got a serial port, VGA port. Oh, I lied. So there's a um, here's an infrared port. So there is something. There's infrared here. Which actually, I might be able—I might be able to make use of this to put some data on here. Um, God, focus! This camera is horrible at focusing. It's got great audio and great video, but man, it focus sucks. And uh, it's got a little little micro headphone jack here. This is like what your old cell phones used to use. And then here's a uh, printer port, parallel printer port. And then uh, here's the bottom of the machine. So what you do is you just loosen, there's two thumb screws on here. Oops. So, remember, righty tighty, lifty loosey. <laughs> and then uh, there's a little eject button here. And, oops. And the whole bottom just comes off. So this is a, this is a port replicator, or a expander. As you might want to call it. This is just the basic. There's there's actually a full port replicator. This is a this is just an expander here. This just gives you the dead basics: printer, video, serial, and that's it. This is an eject here for the uh, PC card slot, so you can eject the PC card. Um, the only one I have for it right now is the floppy drive. But that all connects to. This bitty bitty little connector here. It's not really bitty, it's very big, but man, it's got a lot of pins in there. I think it's like 180 pins in there. And um, you can close this, you know, to keep it protected. And uh, this is this is basically your entire system bus right here. I mean, this is your, you name it, and it's gonna go through this sucker. This is basically a, a PCI or ISA type expansion, so. Um, but, you know, 
So when you don't have the port replicator on, the only thing you have is you have audio and infrared. And then here's your PC card slot. Focus! Oh, this poor old camera. And uh, here's your charging port, and there's a little reset button there. And there's nothing on this side. This side here is where the hard drive is. You can take this plate off right here, and the hard drive is right here. And uh, this computer's not perfect. It's got some little issues. There's a little piece of plastic missing here, and um, there's some Velcro on the bottom I'm working on getting off. I don't know what this install sticker is, but I'll probably get that off. Um, some little scratches and scuffs, but I mean, considering how small and tiny it is, it's actually in super condition. So, I'm open to any, any ideas of what you guys want me to do with this thing while I have it. I basically have this on extended loan. I can have this as long as I need it or want it. Um, the guy I got it from isn't really a PC type guy, so. And I'm not really a huge PC guy either. I only like weird and obscure things. And this is, trust me, this is pretty freaking weird. So, I mean, who's going to use a laptop like this in 1998? You can't type on it. I mean, yeah, da, and I can't even type on it like this very well. <laughs> I mean, it's just like, yeah. You feel like a little munchkin trying to type on a thing. <laughs> it's horrible. Yeah, you're not touch typing on this, trust me. So, I mean, my 10-year-old niece could probably touch type on this, you know. But, uh, yeah, you're not going to type on this very quickly. Um, I mean, with a keyboard like this, I mean, you're obviously not going to play games that require the keyboard. You're not really going to play games that require the mouse, unless you have a, a PS2 mouse or even a... You can hook a serial mouse up, so, with what I have. And, oh, and this was here. This here was extra. This was not included with the computer. This was an extra cost piece here. So, you know, bear that in mind. You know, when you bought this, this was, I think, $59. And the full dock is a couple hundred. Um, I don't, I can't find pricing for what this thing might have cost new. I'm going to say probably roughly $3,000. Um, I could be wrong. I'm just kind of going on the assumption of the size, the power, and the time. Um, you could buy a, uh, you could buy a full desktop PC for about, for about 2000 with the same similar specification. Now that's with the 32 gigs of memory and the 2 gig hard drive. Um, you know, with a, uh, 15 inch monitor, mouse, keyboard, hard drive. And of course, now those would have had a CD-ROM, a Sound Blaster card, and, uh, Windows 95. And you would be roughly between two and twenty-three hundred dollars for a pretty well kitted out PC with a Pentium seventy-five. Um, so I'm figuring this this machine was probably close to between twenty twenty-eight and three thousand um, dollars, if not more. So I think we'll explore that in the next video. But this is a little intro. So. Uh, questions and comments, of course, you're always welcome to throw them in comment, you know, in the comment section. I try to answer everything. We're going to bring this machine back. Um, we have more stuff to do with the PS2. And uh, I think I might break out my Panasonic and show you guys a Panasonic Tough Book that I actually still use on a fairly regular basis. Um, it's a very interesting machine. So if you guys like the PC content, let me know. I said I'll, I'll gladly make more of it. Um, I have some Mac. Uh, stuff here in the works. Uh, I have an Apple II. We have a Cube, a couple iMacs that we're working on. So uh, it's been slow going, but we're getting there. So thanks for visiting the shack. You know, have a good day. And uh, if you like what we're doing here, let me know.